Batman's Bat Crusade continues, and we reintroduce another members of Batman's Rogues Gallery with Shadows of the Bat, issues number 26 and 27. I'd consider jumping a little further ahead in the, in the timeline and dealing with the two issue storyline involving a gun bunny, which is a new character, but I decided against it as that bit does have a, something of a reference to the conclusion of the hunt for Abattoir. In any case, these issues are written by, a, by Alan Grant, with pencils by Brett Blevins, inks by Bob Smith, colors by Adrian Roy, and lettering by Todd Klein. We open on the kids recounting the bus rescue from Batman 505 from their, their perspective, as we also see that they are recounting some information to Dr. Leslie Tompkins and Commissioner Gordon. And we also learned that Graham Etchison has refused to go into protective custody. As Asbat leaves to continue his patrol, he's ambushed by Lady Clayface. In flashback, we learn what she and Clayface 3 have been up to, intercut with what's going on right now. Clayface and Clayface 3 have been holed up in the woods trying to avoid human contact because they didn't choose to become powered supervillains that kill people when they touch them. With the complication being that Clayface 3 is in constant physical pain, and that's pain is only relieved by killing people. After one instance of this where he kills someone, relieving his pain dramatically, the two are able to conceive a child together. In the present in Gotham, Lady Clayface continues the attack against Asbat, while Clayface 3 goes to kidnap Graham Etchison. The issue ends with Asbat at Lady Clayface's mercy. 27 begins with Lady Cl um, Clayface explaining that they are being coerced to do this by another person. Asbat then breaks free by using a panic button to activate what is basically a full-body taser on the outside of his costume. With some, after interrogating Lady Clayface, he, uh, Asbat learns that Abattoir has the Clayface's child and is holding the child hostage for their parents' cooperation in the kidnapping of Etchison. Asbat gets the location of the meat from Lady Clayface and arrives just as Clayface 3 is trying to get their child. As Abattoir tries to leave with Etchison, Peyton tries to attack Abattoir, and in a spectacular display of bad judgment, Asbat decides to attack Clayface 3 instead of Abattoir. This allows Abattoir to escape with Etchison, while Clayface 3 and Asbat has fight. Damn it, John Paul, you'd have saved us so much grief and also saved yourself your job if you'd just taken down Abattoir instead. After pausing the fighting where Asbat rescues the baby, Cass, from the fire escape due to down power lines, Asbat takes down Clayface 3 and they get uh, sent to Star Labs. However, Abattoir has escaped and elsewhere in Gotham, Avatar's Graham Edgison rigged up to an elaborate torture machine that will eventually kill him if he is not rescued. And I'll save you all the nightmare fuel close-up of Avatar's maniacally laughing, laughing face that closes out the issue. Unfortunately, these versions of Clayface haven't really had the same degree of traction into the modern era of Batman, nor did they appear in Batman the Animated Series, so I don't have the same affinity to them as I do to Clayface proper. That said, I do like this version of these characters as they are more sympathetic antagonists, and I do wish they'd stuck around, particularly post-Infinite Crisis or post-Flashpoint. That said, this storyline is definitely coming to a head here, um, and, it, and it almost kind of pulls it off, but we do run into a bit of stupidity with, with Asbat, with... Um, Asbat basically not going after the person who was obviously the bad guy and who he has previous reason to go after at this point. I mean, yes, Clayface is a threat, but the more active threat here is Abattoir. Now, reasonable to, to take the perspective from this of this is Abattoir, or I'll say this is Asbat not being able to focus in the ways that his predecessor would, which also works as well and leads into setting up his unworthiness as Batman to allow Bruce Wayne to reclaim the mantle later. But in the moment, it is, a, if you ignore for the second, 
our event, our 2020 hindsight of knowing where this is going, it certainly is a more frustrating turn of events. Next time, um, this all comes home to roost, more or less. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, Tossing me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. 